Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. Today, a um, slightly longer video, and it's in two parts. So part one, um, I'm using this Affinity Designer program to try and explain some of the ideas I have about color, um, especially when you break color down into hue, chroma, and value, and what those mean, uh, what they mean to me, and how I use them in my landscape painting. And then the second part of the video is um, up watching me doing a landscape, a watercolour landscape painting. And I'll try and point out uh, during the video um, what I'm doing and how these ideas that I have, how I, I actually apply them in a, a landscape painting. I should put in a little disclaimer here. These are just my ideas. Um, different people are going to have different ideas and I'm not saying my ideas are better than theirs or even that their ideas are better than mine. They're just different. Um, this is art. It's not mathematics or arithmetic. Um, there isn't just one answer. There are many different ways of looking at art. Okay, so that's end of disclaimer. So first of all, these um, ideas. Hue, to me, this is just a fancy way of saying colour. So red, yellow, green, blue, purple, orange, these are all hues. So just colors. The next one is interesting. This is the idea of chroma. So with chroma, the way I think of it, let's say we have these two squares. So the top one is obviously a very saturated, fire engine red uh, color. It has a high chroma. This bottom square is a sort of reddish gray. There's a bit of red in there, but it's mostly gray. So it has very low chroma. And then the third one is value. And value is to do with the lightness or the darkness. So something that is black or almost black has a very low value. And then something that's white or almost white has a very high value. Okay, so that's all well and good. It's all a bit theoretical. How do I actually use these in my paintings? Well, if we look at this painting, this is one of my uh, pastel paintings. With the painting, the landscape, I wanted to have a feeling of uh, depth, of three-dimensionality. And obviously with that, you have to use some tricks because we're doing this on a flat two-dimensional piece of paper. And one of those tricks that you can use is linear perspective. Now with some compositions, for example, this one, the linear perspective is a bit easier. So we have hedgerows and the, the side of the hill, and they're all sort of disappearing towards a vanishing point. So that's linear perspective, and that's easy with this composition. With this one, everything's a bit sort of more horizontal. Um, so the linear perspective is a little bit more subtle, but it's still there. Um, and we can maybe see this if we change this from color into looking at values. So if we change this into a black and white image, which I should be able to do if I can remember how to do it. <clears throat> okay. So basically I've changed all of the color into a sort of gray scale from almost white up to black. And you can see if you divide it into um, the foreground, sort of middle ground, background, and the sky, we look at the foreground, we have a lots of implied detail. So this is a field with maybe some sort of crops or grass or something growing upwards. And I'm using a combination of values, very darks and very bright values beside each other plus the sort of, uh, the not so much brush marks, this is done in pastel, but the, the pastel strokes are all sort of vertical or nearly vertical, 
combined with the, the contrast and values gives a feeling of implied detail in the foreground. It sort of feels or looks like um, the grass or the crops growing upwards. And when you think about the real world, we can see more detail in the, the land that's closest to us and then the land that's further away, our eyes cannot resolve as much detail. So if you can sort of get that feeling into the painting, that creates the sort of illusion of depth. It's bringing that sort of linear perspective into the painting. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So like I say, the foreground, there's lots of contrast and values and combined with the sort of upward strokes of the pastel. And then you compare that to the middle ground. So this middle ground, there's bright values and there's grayish values, but we don't really have the dark and the bright beside each other. Ignore this hedgerow for a second. So there's isn't really much detail in the middle ground. You'll also notice in the middle ground, the brush, I keep saying brushwork, the pastel strokes are horizontal rather than vertical. So this helps to create a lack of detail, if you like, in the middle ground. So that distinguishes the middle ground from the foreground. And that helps to give that a little bit of a feeling of depth to the painting. The hedgerow is a darker value. That's just to make it stand out. If this was the same sort of value as this part of the field or the hill in the background, it wouldn't really stand out. Um, it wouldn't be a feature in the painting. So that's just why I used a darker value for the hedgerow. Okay, so hopefully that sort of makes sense. That's how I feel or how I think about values. I try to use values to help me create this feeling of depth, to get some feeling of linear perspective, creating detail in the foreground, but not much detail in the middle ground and the background. Okay, so then the next part, we're going to jump in and start looking at me or watching me uh, painting a watercolour landscape. And again, I'll try and point out some of these ideas of, um, well, hue, not so much, but chroma and the values and how I'm using them in the painting. Okay, so this was actually a painting that I did um, a few days ago. The last week, this sort of first week in February, I haven't really done much painting. I haven't really had a chance. I've been busy with um, sort of writing stuff with other work things. But getting back into this idea of how do I use colours and the different ideas, chroma and value. I do tend to use colours that are kind of close to local colour, if you like. So the sky is blue the grass is green and so on. Um, I don't mind things like uh, Fauve's paintings where they use very, they get away completely from local color. Instead, they maybe have like an orange sky and purple grass. I don't mind that. It's interesting to look at. Um, it's just for my own paintings, I prefer a more literal use of color, if you like. I do add in abstractions in other ways. So you saw me flicking water onto the sky and things just to create different blooms and different effects in the watercolor. I just like to play around with that aspect of watercolor. So in terms of the sky, you can see the chroma. There's a patch of a brighter blue, but a, and a little bit of purple, but a lot of the sky has a very low chroma. It's There is a bit of a suggestion of blue in there, but it's more sort of grayish blue than bright blue. And then this hedgerow that I added in, it is a higher chroma value. So it is a, a more saturated blue. Again, this is sort of contrast. If I had a very bright blue sky, I wouldn't be able to put the hedgerow in because how would I contrast that with the sky? 
I would then just have to use values of very dark blue to try and distinguish it from the blue in the sky. So always think about when you're using colours, you need some sort of contrast in the painting to make it more interesting. You also need some sort of contrast so that things will stand out from each other. Otherwise everything just sort of merges into one big thing. And again, in the landscape itself, so I had a bit of purple in there, but it was a very light purple. It's almost a greyish purple. And then I'll add in more patches of more saturated color. So again, this is thinking about the chroma, the amount of saturation of the color. If everything is saturated, um, it may not be as interesting to look at. Or if everything has a very low chroma, everything is sort of gray, again, it might not be that interesting to look at. But if you have patches which are sort of grayish and patches that are more saturated color, a higher chroma level, that introduces a bit of variety into the, the painting and may make it a bit more interesting for the viewer to look at. Now, in the case of my paintings, I approach landscape paintings as a kind of semi-abstract painting. It's not, um, it's not pure realism. It's certainly not like photorealism. So you can start to see in the middle ground, especially there's patches that are very low chroma. They're not that saturated. The foreground has more uh, saturated color. Again, this helps to distinguish the foreground from the middle ground and the middle ground from the background, which maybe helps to create that sense of 3D three-dimensionality. So this is a scan of that final painting. Something else to point out again from the point of view of values, there's more value range in the foreground as we saw in the example before the pastel painting. Again this gives more of a sense of detail in the foreground which again adds to this creating the sense of depth. Okay, so hopefully uh, all of this rambling sort of had made some sense to somebody. But basically, you can use values to create a sense of detail. Uh, you can use chroma to create a sense of interest in the painting. Not everything grey, not everything saturated, but mix it up a bit, make it a bit more interesting. And in terms of hue, in terms of the actual colours, Yes, you can use local color like blue for the sky and green for the grass, but you don't have to. Take a look at Fovis painting, for example, um, where you know you can have red grass and purple skies. You can use any colors that you want, really. Okay, so if you'd like to subscribe, just click on the big red button below and hopefully see you in the next video.